God's amazing and abundant grace be with you this morning. Over the month of June, we are turning our intention and attention towards the Lord's Prayer. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember being taught the Lord's Prayer. I've rummaged through my mental file cabinet of memories several times over the last few weeks. I've lugged out the slide projector of snapshots in my brain, reviewing my childhood experiences. I've closed my eyes tight and flipped through the Polaroid pictures of Sunday school classes from the past. But there's nothing not a zip, zilch, goose egg. I don't remember being taught the Lord's Prayer. I mean, maybe for you, you recall your grandmother or uncle reciting the prayer, helping you learn the words. Maybe there was a Sunday school teacher who first shared these words with you and said them every Sunday before you could dig into snack time or you memorize the Lord's Prayer as part of the catechism, whether you can pinpoint the place and person who helped you learn the Lord's Prayer, or like me, you caught the Lord's Prayer through the repeated rhythm of others reciting the words in worship until they were woven into your soul. The deeper question is what do these words provoke and evoke in your heart? What do these words set stirring in your soul as they fall and flutter from your lips? During the month of June, we're going to dig into and dive into the Lord's Prayer as part of our life together. And I'm struck by the truth that the Lord's Prayer has been part of communities of faith from the very beginning. We have early documents of the church showing that the Lord's Prayer was part of worship experiences from the first century. There's evidence that you did not pray the Lord's Prayer until you'd been baptized. Early Christians would pray these familiar, faithful words three times a day, at 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. Prayer is at the heart of the Christian life. It's the way we connect and communicate with God. It's the way God connects and communicates with us. You see, prayer is a two-way street of, of speaking and listening, yearning and yielding, petitions and praise, forming and fashioning us with the fingerprints of the one in whose image we are formed. So how do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. It's like you could read my mind this morning. During June, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, I want to invite you to do that at noon every day. As you do, imagine how the voices of people in our church scattered around Sarasota and Bradenton and beyond are also mixing and mingling with your voice. Just for you know, just so you know, if you happen to miss noon o'clock, it's okay to pray the words at two or four or whenever you remember, knowing that in the eternal echoes of the universe, your voice is still merging, mixing with everyone else's. Second, next Thursday, June 10th, I invite you to join me on the Windling Terrace at 11 a.m. Bring a lawn chair. We're going to pray together in the beauty of creation. On Sunday mornings, we're going to dive into the Lord's Prayer during worship. On Saturday, June 19th at 2 p.m. on Zoom, we're going to gather for Juneteenth, a holy day of honoring emancipation, and prayerfully committing ourselves to the ongoing work of justice. But most of all, I pray that you will enter into this month of June with anticipation and enthusiasm 
and hopefulness for what God's doing in all of our lives. To travel down the two-way street of yearning and yielding to God and that we would do this together. I can't wait to hear from you what's happening deep in your heart and soul in the days to come. And if you have questions, or when you sense the Spirit stirring, reach out to me. I would love to talk more. And may grace, peace, and God's love be with you now more than ever. Amen.